for gypsum in road engineering. This project inscribes within a partnership between the Hessenier School of Civil Engineering, uh, Ecole des Ponts, Paris, uh, OCP, Phosphates of Morocco, CNER and Colas GTR. First of all, I should uh, tell what phosphogypsum is. Then why do we need to treat it, not to use it raw? Then uh, what are the mixture designs by DOE method, design of experiments method? So arrive to pilot road sections, mechanical and environmental assessment, and parametric study to optimize all of our results. First of all, what is phosphogypsum? As we can see in this chemical reaction equation, almost five tons of phosphogypsum ensue from full tons of phosphate ore uh, attacked by sulfuric acid. Uh, as you can see in these pictures, uh, to obtain only one ton of phosphoric acid used in fertilizers. So phosphogypsum is a co-product of the wet process of phosphoric acid production industry. It is either discharged into the sea or stacked. Now let's characterize our phosphogypsum before uh, using it starting with its chemical composition and its physical properties. From bibliography, gypsum is the principal component of phosphogypsum. Thus, sulfate and calcium can constitute more than 90% of its chemical composition. Other components are uh, silica dioxide, alumina oxide, iron three oxide and uh, um, phosphorus pentoxide and heavy metal trace elements like arsenic, silver, barium, cadmium, chromium, lead, mercury and selenium. Um, sorry, I will just not move this. Mm, not soft and now oh. uh, from bibliography these are the components of uh, phosphogypsum now we've conducted a chemical analysis of zorphosphor phosphogypsum by Kalimag laboratory um, and these are our results. Hopefully heavy metals, heavy metal trace elements are between 0 0.06 milligram per kilogram and 3.62 milligram per kilogram. Physical properties, pH, it is considered as an acidic co-product between two and three. Solubility of phosphogypsum depends on its pH. It is very soluble in seawater, uh, 4.1 gram per liter. Particle density between 2.27 and 2.40. Water content, the free water content of phosphogypsum is often determined by drying at 60, 60 degrees for five hours. Uh, recommended by Avrit and Glicksman, and granularity, uh, particle diameter size between 45 and 250 microns. Micrographs reveal a well-defined crystal structure with a majority of rhombic and orthorhombic crystals, as you see in the picture. Now, why do we need to treat phosphogypsum not to use it raw? What does a road material require and why do we need to treat phosphogypsum? A road material requires sufficient bearing capacity, immediate index as IPI and Californian bearing ratio after four days of immersion in water, compressive and tensile strength, rigidity, compactability, insensitivity to water and freeze, durability, preservation of long-term resistance, and leaching resistance. Now, why do we need to treat phosphogypsum? Some parameters influence mechanical behavior of phosphogypsum. Low comprehensive strength, 
solubility, high water content, thinness modulus, and acidity. Thus, we have low mechanical behavior, settlements, cracks, and sweating. So it is an inadequate use of raw phosphogypsum, the reason why we need to treat it so as to correct, correct its weaknesses. That's why we use DOE method to obtain some mixture designs. The first one is composed of phosphogypsum, steel slag, and cement. The second one, sand instead of steel, steel slag. For the first mixture design, we have phosphogypsum coming from OCP group industrial complex of Jorfelsfer region. Just next to it, we have Lasuna seed that brings us some steel slag, but we do not have always these chains. That's why we use for the second mixture design sand instead of steel slag. Now experimental points. Um, this simplex shows uh, the three studied factors, which are which are phosphogypsum, cement, and steel slag or sand. This is our area of study. We have nine experimental points, and we extrapolate the responses we are looking for to the continuously to all of the area of study. The studied factors are phosphogypsum from Jorfelsfer as main component varying from 45 to 70 percent. Uh, these numbers come, are inspired uh, from uh, bibliography. Portland type 1 cement as binding and stabili stabilizing agent varying from 4 to 7 percent. And steel slag from sonacid zorphosphor or sand to improve the granular structure varying from 23 to 45 percent so as to obtain 100 percent as a total. Now experimental program. Um, we start with bearing capacity by uh, immediate index IPI and Californian bearing ratio after four days of immersion in water as you see in the picture and swelling. Then uh, optimal dry density and water content by modified proctor so as to build some tubes to obtain simple compression strength and diametrical compression tensile strength and elastic modules. As a first result, granularity. We can notice that phosphogypsum has a, a very thin granularity. Steel slag is here uh, or sent for the, the second mixture design a granular corrector and uh, we obtain the nine mixtures that tested continuous granularity between both of them. Other, some of the other responses are compressive resistance or compressive strength. Uh, after 28 days, this is the, the result for steel slug, first mixture design, and sand, second mixture, mixture design. We can arrive to 1.65 megapascal and 1.971 uh, for sand. Now the same, tensile strength after uh, 28 days, we arrive to 0 0.9 and 0 0.6 uh, with sand. And elastic modulus arrived to 1,415, 1,861 megapascal with sand. We cannot deny that uh, we have better responses with the second mixture design of phosphogypsum, sand, and cement. Now, optimum base layer mixture criteria from C. FTR 2007. First, Californian bearing ratio upper than 20, 20 and the ratio to uh, uh, IPI upper than 1.12 for average traffic. The second point is in this um, picture, picture uh, compressive resistance after 28 days upper than 1.2 megapascal and we obtain this area colored in yellow. 
environmental objective, maximization of phosphogen dose, uh, dosage, and economic objective, minimization of cement dosage. And the last point, at least the couple, tensile strength and elastic modulus after one year in zone T1, mm. this is zone T1, of the classification chart from CFTR 2007. Now, experimental sections, mechanical and environmental assessment. Mechanical assessments by deflection auscultation and environmental assessment by leaching test. We've built a pilot road. OCP Group has built an experimental 900 meters long road in Cephi site, divided into five sections of 180 meters. These differ into the, uh, in the material used for the subraid layer. The first section is a control section made by existing materials as a subgrade layer, while the other four sections are made with mixtures with different percentages of phosphogypsum, sand, tailings, and 7% cement as a subgrade layer. It is a pavement with a reverse structure composed of a subgrade, as you see in green, of 35 centimeters treated phosphogypsum, a sub base layer of 20 centimeters of untreated gravel type F1, base layer of 15 centimeters of untreated gravel type A, and the surface course is a two layer surface dressing. The environmental issue being essential in this study, a bituminous and permeable membrane was laid at the level of the upper part of the earthworks along the, the road to collect the infiltration waters of each, of each section in order to carry out their chemical analysis and study the environmental impacts. Drains are placed in a small gutter then covered with geotextile to prevent the infil infiltration of fine elements. Each section has its own drain and manhole. Communication between the subgrade courses of the different sections is prevented by a waterproof glue lip. Experimental section works. Here are some photos to show them. Now, results of the deflectometric auscultation. The objective is to evaluate the mechanical behavior of the phosphogypsum layer and its evolution in time. Measurements campaigned by the National Center for Road Studies and Research in 2017, then 19, starting with 17, 2017. I should uh, first define some uh, values before explaining. So average value A, standard deviation, D90 equals A, uh, average value, plus 1.3 standard deviation for axis and for side, the same values for side, to obtain a deflection class. And for 2017, we obtained D2 for the deflection class, which means D90 between 100 and 150 per 100 millimeters. We notice that the pavement sections contain it. Here we have the first section, a control section with existing materials, and all of the others are made of phosphogypsum, treated phosphogypsum. The pavement sections containing phosphogypsum behave all like the control section. We cannot deny a slight amelioration between control section and the others. But what is important is the result of 2019, based on the spread of deflection values, three zones are determined as on the figure one, two, and three. D90 and the, the standard deviation in the first zone control section are higher, as you can see, far higher than the others in the two other zones, especially in the side. This is the control section made of existing materials. We conclude that sections made of um, the phosphogypsum mixtures in the subgrade layer are all more rigid than the control section after thir 30 months of operation. Deflection auscultation conclusions. Uh, satisfactory evolution of performances over time of all sections from deflection class D2 to D1. 
which is explained by pavement rigidity and the effect of traffic compaction. Phosphogypsum mixtures, they all showed better deflectometric results that, uh, than those obtained for the uh, control section. So the phosphogypsum subgrade layer, whether with tailings or crushed sand as a granular corrector brings considerable advantages. Section two is the best. It's the mixture of crushed sand, phosphogypsum and cement. It gives the best deflection results after 30 months. Now leaching test. We have conducted the pollutant potential test because it is the most aggressive test and makes it possible to determine the maximum quantities of discharge after shaking for 24 hours. First, we weigh 100 grams of the sample. Then we add one liter of distilled water to have a mass ratio of 10. We shake immediately for 24 hours plus or minus one. Then we, we separate the liquid from the solid by a membrane filter. And we send the L weight to the chemical laboratory. As, we can, as you can see, here are our L weights. This is the separation phases and shaking phases. Leaching test results on cephy phosphogypsum. Maximum concentration measured on the L weight for all the elements are still far lower than the requirements of international guidelines, which are Moroccan regulation, French regulation for waste, and Indian regulation for phosphogypsum in roads. The concentrations measured according to this aggressive leaching test are largely acceptable. Now that we have built our uh, pilot road, we found that, that we can even optimize the type of pavement structure. That's why we co we've conducted a parametric study and here are the types of pavement structure considered and factors of study. We considered three types of pavement structure, mixed pavement structure, inverse pavement structure, and structure with a subbase treated with hydraulic binder made of bituminous concrete and two layers of treated phosphogypsum at low level mines and high level plus. The factors are soil bearing capacity, traffic and phosphogypsum performances taken at low level mines, as you see PC mines, bearing capacity, traffic mines and phosphogypsum mines and high level plus. Now, soil bearing capacity effect. For the three types of pavement structure, mixed one, blue bar, uh, inverse, yellow, and treated phosphogypsum sub-base, green. We notice that total thickness and phosphogypsum layer thickness both decrease when going from bearing capacity minus to plus we can see that mixed structure are the thinner and we can uh, gain up to two times because the, the green uh, pavement structure is composed of two layers of treated phosphogypsum. We can gain up to two times more phosphogypsum than mixed structure and 2.3 times more than inversed. Now traffic effects. For the three types of pavements, both total thickness and phosphogypsum layer thickness increase with heavy traffic from traffic mines to plus. In this case, inverse structure is interesting. And treated phosphogypsum performances effect, uh, we can notice that we can gain up to 15 centimeters more by using mixed, mixed structure instead of inverse one, especially for rigid phosphogypsum. And we can gain up to nine centimeters comparing uh, the green uh, for treated phosphogypsum sub base with the blue mixed structure. Economic balance. An economic assessment has been ca carried out on the basis of the Moroccan market. Pavements with a sub base treated with hydraulic binder have a cost advantage. 
compared to other types of structures. This type of pavements can be up to 52% less expensive than mixed, mixed pavements and up to 43% less expensive than reverse pavement structure. Conclusion for this parametric study. We conclude that whatever the traffic, bearing capacity of the soil and the quality of phosphogypsum treatment, the pavements with the sub-base treated with hydraulic binders are very competitive compared to the others because they are cheaper, consume more treated phosphogypsum and contribute to resources preservation. However, inverse pavement structure can be of interest in heavy traffic where it, be, where it becomes less expensive than mixed structure pavements. As, an, as a perspective, limiting cracks propagation thanks to the treated phosphogypsum behavior, which tends to swell. Uh, but further assessment is needed. And we conclude in general that phosphogypsum because of its low compressive resistance, solubility, high water content, thinness modulus and acidity, raw phosphogypsum cannot be used alone in road application. That's why we looked for mixture designs by DOE, design of experiment method. And we've built a pilot road assessed mechanically by deflection auscultation on Cephi test slab. Conclusion, the mixture of crushed sand, phosphogypsum and cement gives the best deflection results after 30 months. Leaching test results on the same Cephi phosphogypsum, max concentration measured of all heavy metals are still far lower than the, the requirements of Moroccan, French and in, Indian regulations. And for the parametric study, whatever the traffic, the bearing capacity of the soil and the quality of phosphogypsum treatment, the pavements with the phosphogypsum treated sub base are very competitive compared to the reverse and mixed one. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, I will be glad to answer. Thank you, Dr. Chaima, uh, for your very interesting talk. And um, um, does the audience have any questions for Dr. Chaima? Okay, so, uh, so I will thank Dr. Chaima once again. Wonderful talk, ma'am. So um, next, um, we move on to our next uh, presenter.